And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, with game two of the Division C West matchup between the virtual Murky Slayers and Tickle Me Tassadar. MDP, how about you run down the players for Tickle Me Tassadar one more time here in red? All right, on the red team, we have BKL playing as Old Man Kane himself. We have Old Pro on Johanna. The battle begins. We got ourselves Ten seconds. Care Cinnamon is what I'm going to call him on the Haka. <laughs> we got a uh, Bayonetta on. Oh, what is her name? I completely forgot the Dryad. And uh, Lunar. <laughs> and uh, Sheba on Jaina. And on the blue side, we have Fake News Nate on Zeratul, Swagnaros on Malthael, Silver King on Arthas, Seabrisket on Medivh, and a Brewer 2 on Avathur. I think uh, Virtual Murky Slayers has quite an interesting comp this game. What do you think of it, MVP? Three frontliners, Abathur and Medivh, sounds like they want to fight pretty much more than last game. <laughs> oh, that will be right? saying something. Wow. After last game, I mean, that's probably a good comp if they just want to fight all the time. I mean, they get a lot of value. So we'll see how it works out. I know you're a fan of... Malfail. We haven't seen him too much, I don't think, in NGS so far, but I know you're a fan of him in DP. You think he's a good pick this game? Mm, yeah, I think he can do pretty well against the uh, beefy front line of the Haka and Johanna. He definitely cuts through HP really easily. Yeah, we'll have to see what they do. So, Virtual Murky Slayers is up one game right now. Uh, what do you think Tickle Me Tassar needs to do to bring it back. They did have a DC last game, so that was a bit rough, but uh, what do you think they can do gameplay-wise to make sure they win this game? Well, step number one, don't have the DC. <laughs> step number two is to, well, mostly not have the DC, because I feel like until that point, uh, their teams were in pretty good positions, but once... They had that uh, bot being out of position. It kind of threw off their entire team fight. So That's I feel like uh, if they can keep their positioning up, they should be able to keep the fights around. Yeah. Do you think they're going to be able to deal with all the heavy dive that uh, Virtual Murky Slayers have? They have Zeratul and Malfail who both really want to go in on them. So they're going to have to protect their Jaina. Do you think they can do it? It's going to be a reactionary game. For a little bit until they can get their bearings. I've been really enjoying the play so far from Virtual Murky Slayers. They're using the invisible Zeratul to an extreme level of effectiveness. By giving him hat, he's able to take all the camps around the map with just a very excellent level of speed. They were getting a lot of map control here early on and a lot of tower damage. I think this is going to be able to add up for them going down the line. I must say that going into this first phase, the uh, virtual Murky Slayers are just looking absolutely excellent. I hope they can keep this up. Yeah, their macro has been top notch, and it looks like we're going into the altars in about 10 seconds here. Abathur going bot to get his soak on as much as possible, and we're going to start grouping up here. Dahaka and Malphite are both going to grab the bottom one. And it looks like a fight may ensue over the middle one. We'll have to see if it starts. Right now, it looks like uh, Tickle Me Tassar are just getting positioning over this. Pushing off Virtual Murky Slayer. Zeratul coming out of the back here, going out of the Decker Kane. Not getting much damage at all, though. And he has to back off almost immediately. Uh, the Haka able to keep up with the Abathur and Soak up top. And no one's really winning this fight too much. Virtual or uh, Tickle Me Tassar definitely has priority, but they have not been able to get it just yet. Um... Arthas getting taken down quite a bit here. The burrow in. The Hawk can get a grab at his first kill of the game. So great job by Tukumi Tassar there. Able to secure the second uh, altar there and up on four shots right now. I think a really massive weakness in Virtual Murky Slayer's comp has just been revealed here. Towers of Doom and a lot of big point control maps take a long time for the fights to be won, and not having a good sustain healer like Deckard Kane is for Tickle Me Tassadar means that it's really hard for the virtual Murky Slayers to step in on points consistently, and they're just going to get poked down repeatedly. And I think that's one of the reasons the Hawk had such an easy time of grabbing that kill on Arthas there. 
I think the Hawk has been a good pick here to deal with the Abathur. He's able to go to lane if he needs to and uh, soak evenly, not be able to fall behind. So I think that the Hawk was a great pick. Uh, Zero Tool doing his thing, getting these camps. Oh, is this a gank coming in, trying to find the Zero Tool? Yeah, too the too much. Zero Tool gets oh, a oh, good oh, cleave oh. off and then just kind of runs straight away. He knows that's not where he wants to be, so. Uh, Tickle Me Taster is going to be able to claim their camp here and stay even on pressure. <laughs> and it looks like we're going to have the next altar spawning. Is there anything in this game so far that stands out to either of you? Is maybe interesting or weird or, you know, some kind of macro? It seems like been... the, uh, the way that uh, Virtual Mercury Slayers is trying to go is to eliminate somebody before they're in the group. Oh, and quick here, we have a little bit of a fight. Arth is going down. He is going to get rooted here and taken down almost immediately. Ooh. I think Virtual Mercury Slayers is going to have to concede the point at this stage now that they have someone down. I think you could say he was in the uh, wrong place at the wrong time. It's funny how I mentioned what uh, Virtual Mercury Slayers wanted to do, and then Tickle Me Tassadar did that thing. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Finding an isolated pick on a target, but I think uh, oh. their comp isn't built that way, so that was more of a misplay on the side of Virtual Mercury Slayers than a great play by Tickle Me Tassadar. Yeah, Still, I so bet they'll take it. It does look like uh, Virtual Mercury Slayers was able to get half of the um, keep up top, though. So that was a good macro play by them, for sure. Able to reclaim at least some of what they lost and trying to get that tower down pretty low so they can take it later if they need to. As we approach Thames here, it's going to be very interesting to see all of the picks that both sides will be taking going into the next round of altars here. What do you think of these uh, heroic picks for each side, MVP? Well, we're opening with Ring of Frost on Jaina, Isolation on Dahaka, Leaping Strike on Lunara. Oh, and Dahaka going in, able to just get the kill on Malfoy, it looks like. I can't see how he escapes this one. Isolation and just hooking him right back after all his team rotated up, so good play by them. Bit of an over push there. Yep. So... Yeah, so we went over, or you kind of went over uh, Tickle Me Tassar's picks. What about Virtual Murky Slayer's heroics here? Oh, we got Ultimate Evolution on Abathur, Polybon, Medivh, Army of the Dead on Arthas, Last Rites on Malthiel, Void Prison on... the guy. <laughs> on Zeratul there? Who are you going to give an edge to with heroics now that they've been taken by both sides? Do you think one side has a clear teamfight advantage? The time is now, I'm I'm feeling uh feeling Tassadar's team fight here more than Okay, players. so here we go. We have double oh, Zeratul. Gonna deal a lot of damage to the Decker Kane. Will they be able to take him out? Amazing ring on three oh. people there! Gonna be able to take them all down almost immediately! And now virtual murky slayers have to run for their lives. Will they be able to do it? Malveil also gonna go down. Medivh gonna be the only one to make it out of there. As she, well as she, she, as well she, 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 wow. <laughs> Saved the fight for his team. It looks like it, it looked like it was going so bad. Deckard Kane was just about to fall, but immediately the ring comes out and destroys three of them. Uh, to be that's fair, that's one that's of them was a clone, but. Still counts. Down all the threats. Yeah, Hashtag still counts. What a <laughs> ring. My goodness. Tickle me, Tassadar. Stepping up here in game two after having the DC, keeping a cool head. The fights like that, it'll be a oh, miracle. Oh, Looks like he's going to try and take this. Will they be able to do much, though? Johanna slaps on this. Yeah. Zeratul doing a lot of damage. Uh, Polyball oh, coming through. Does end up spreading. Will it spread again? The triple spread. It keeps going. Decker Kane going to fall here. And it actually was a great play from Zeratul. They're able to get his team a bit of an advantage after suffering for a while. And then now we're finally up ahead in the EXP here. Wow. What an aggressive move from the virtual Murky Slayers. After losing a team fight to immediately turn around and say, nah, we're coming for you. We know you're on the camp, and we're going to be there shortly. 
go in and make a few excellent picks. That's going to keep them right in the game after a huge loss to that ring just moments before. Yeah, what do you think about Virtual Murky Slayer's macro here? I'd have to say that it's been really impressive. Uh, while they're, they do seem to be lacking in teamfight consistently when compared with Tickle Me Tassadar, their ability to play the map with this comp has been very impressive. I mean, no true range DPS. They've got an Abathur pick. That's a little abnormal, but not so much on Towers of Doom. And then they've still been able to have full control over camps, make a lot of interesting yep. aggressive rotations. Okay, so oh. fight breaking out here. Malveil almost going to go down. He does take a portal to get out of there. Uh, the rest of the team rooted in the back from Arthas. Will they be able to continue this fight? Arthas running quite a bit. Now he does have isolation. The tongue able to bring him back. Do they have the damage? The channel in the off? back. He does have his ghouls, and the portal is going to go down. I think he is going to get out of there, but it does look like Tickle Me Tester is going to win this fight. They were able to grab it. Mouth will not Ooh, quite able to oh, go down Zara. here yet. Though. Zara not doing too much here. Oh, okay. Clothes are in the back, doing a lot of damage to Decker Kane. Will be able to finish him off? He is getting slowed forever by the Jaina, though. Not doing too much. Medivh trying to deal some good damage here. He's getting a lot, off a lot of Qs. No, no, no. He's going to get ringed. Will he go down? Polybomb out of the Dahaka. Didn't, was not able to stop them from dealing enough damage. But Tickle, or, uh, Virtual Mercury Slayer is able to grab the other side here because of their macro earlier, as we mentioned. They were able to grab that top tower and get five shots off compared to Tickle Me Tassadar's three. I'd say we're about halfway through the game, and it's actually looking very even, at least in terms of levels and team fight skills. And we all know that Towers of Doom is a great place to make a comeback. Who do you think, MDP, has the chance for taking home the victory from this point so far with what you've seen here in Game 2? Hmm, I'm still leaning on on uh, Tickle Me Tassadar here. The way those, uh, those Jaina rings have been landing, especially the big one, is... Uh, exactly why I was thinking that they would have the advantage in the team fights and if they can continue that uh, level level of play they should be able to take out the win Zeratul just continues his camping here man virtual murky slayers have been on top of this macro game I must say for Div C this is some truly impressive stuff Yep, looks like they are. They did get both camps here, weren't able to pressure too much with it. Zeratul just going in there for a little bit of poke. Blessed Shield going out, not able to kill anyone off of it though, so that is a fairly large heroic down for this next fight. Yeah. It is going to be a triple alter, so this is going to be a big swing in the game for whoever gets it here. No kidding, but the loss of Bless Shield with only 30 seconds before the alters come up, you can't help but feel like that was a big misplay from Old Pro. And after he had played such a majestic game of Stitches in the last round, despite the loss, I don't know, I'm hoping to see better play from him from this point out. Yeah, we'll see if he's able to have effectiveness in this next fight. We'll see when it starts up. It looks like uh, Dahaka is going to be able to grab that top camp. He does have oh, the Abathur. dig, though, so they're going to have enough. Going in. Abathur going on. Will he be able to do anything? He does get a shield, doing a decent amount of damage on the Decker. Rain. The stay a while and listen, though, destroy Rain. the team. Rain going out, able to hit Medivh. He goes down almost immediately. Arthas also taking oh. down so quickly. The Haka didn't even need to burrow in there, really. They were just destroying them with the Jaina combo. Uh, Blush Shield does go out, misses. Uh, Zeratul getting quite low. Will he be able to escape? They do have the vision on him, but not going to be able to do too much. Malthael coming in, but he is versus three people. What can he really do here? Uh, Abathur soaking in lane, not doing too much either. Zeratul coming back in now that he has his tap up. Going to be doing some damage. A lot of people low on the side of Tickle Me Tassadar, but you still have to get through four people. Oh, they nice are going to be able to push him off, it looks like, though, with just the Mouth Ale and, and Zeratul. Doing a lot of damage. Will they be able to finish off? Lunar does go down. Mouth Ale in the back, getting really low. Still he does go down as well. Zeratul, the last man standing on their team, able to really do anything in this fight. Medivh coming down, though, as he is now res. Decker Kane coming on the other side. It's going to be a 4v3 in a second, but they are going to back up. They got exactly what they wanted, and they were able to get eight shots off on the enemy core here. Well, uh, Virtual Mercury Slayer is only able to get four. Wow. Man, what do you guys think about the <laughs> fight? It looks good for one side, but all of a sudden... These fights are a roller coaster of emotions. <laughs> a roller coaster of emotions indeed. The idea 
that tickle me tassadar could drop to instantly off another beautiful ring from Sheba and that they they still have the wherewithal in virtual working slayers to poke off with two and a hat like th this stuff mechanically is is absolutely beautiful to watch you, you don't even see play this good in the HGC <laughs> Oh, okay. Deckard! Root gonna go on a Deckard. No follow up though. Zer tools pretty far Pops back. Ghouls? They're poking him off. Yeah, ghouls down. What is that's 80 seconds of no ghouls. I'm not. The, the, the altars aren't spawning for a bit, so they do have some time, but that was definitely quite aggressive. Johanna going off to poke. Medivh getting hit by the root. Will he go down? He is really low. Will he be able to get out of the portal? Oh, the C1! Listen, amazing! Enough time for Jaina to hit her last crossbow. Let's be able to get a ring. She does hit Arthas. No one else. Will they be able to take him down? He's getting quite low. Almost out of 1 HP. But all the backline is hit by the Void Prison. They're going to have a lot of time to back off here. The clone able to take some... Or able to take a lot of damage. But Arthas does go down eventually. And finally, Malthael falls. The only one to get out of there is Tass... Or is Zeratul. And he has to defend the two altars here. Are they going for a fort here? Down. Really crazy. Oh, they are going to go for a fort. Zeratul might be able to take this, though, before anyone can make it up. They're not going very fast. Yeah, I don't know if Dahaka is unable to poke Zeratul off here. This might not have been a worthwhile trade. Yeah. I guess with five shots, though, if they secure them, then it becomes a two-point game. Or a one boss, one point at, at eight shots. So yeah. mathematically, it'll work out in their advantage in the long run here, but... Still, I think I would have liked to see them send Jaina or at least one other person up to poke off so that they could get 10 shots instead of just 5. But they were, they're moving on the box, and I really like this call. There's no way that the virtual Murky Slayers can stop Tickle Me Tassadar in time, and they know it. They're just going to recap their fort down bottom lane, so they end up with a really nice swing, but I can't help but feel like they missed an opportunity to win the game right there. Yeah, I mean, they would have been at one, but that's pretty close to the game. You can't let your opponents have anything at that point. It we'll looks see like Alakai do. doesn't know how to do math. Five, five, and four is 14, my friend. They would have been a negative one. Oh, if they had said someone else. <laughs> my bad. I misunderstood and said not taking the keep it bottom. Yeah, you are correct. Well, they recap we'll the see. fort, and it looks like they're pushing it top here with uh, Tigmin Tassadar. Level yeah, I mean, 20, huh? Solid macro. What do you think of those uh, level 20 talents, MVP? Stay a while and listen. Having the blind on it is going to be quite terrifying for virtual murky slayers, being mostly, you know, melee auto attacky kind of people for the most part. Oh, I However, about that. oh and continent. Con uh, the Haka's level 20 that will spread to all the people who are next to each other. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, that's Words actually not quite scary, yeah. Okay, a single altar here. If uh, Virtual Murky Slayers can win this, they will keep Tekumi Tassar off for quite a bit of time, and we'll have some time to recover from this, and it is 20 on 20, so we'll see what they can do. Just starting this up right now, getting a little poke on Johanna. Oh, oh, bro. Not doing too much on the side, though. Uh, Tassar doing a lot of damage. Will they be able to follow up with double Tassadar? Here we go. What are they going to be able to do? Lunara going down pretty low. Da killed almost immediately. Uh, Decker Kane looks like it's going to be the next target for the Tassadars. Uh, Medivh going down super low, getting taken down by Jada there. Tanks fighting in the front. Doing a lot of damage to Malthael. Malthael, oh, he doesn't go down. Dahaka dies last second. Stay well, listen, going into the Arthas. Uh, Dahaka, or Malthael versus Johanna. Johanna's, uh, indestructible and ends up taking him down. So it's two, two versus two with a hat. I think... Uh, Virtual Murky Slayers is gonna be able to grab this. We'll see. They yeah. do, or technically Tasser has a lot of poke here. We'll see how they're able to keep him off. Johanna does not have indestructible. She is able to die here if she gets caught. A lot oh, of damage. Know. Will she go down? Just enough damage. Oh. They are able to take her down. Jaina has to back off now, or she will die. So, uh, Virtual Murky Slayers lives to fight another day. <laughs> I mean by the skin of their teeth, but yeah, I think that epic bubble coming in from fake news Nate is what made it happen. Not to mention uh, the miss ring from Shiba, a very rare miss ring. This game has been all about incredible macro play from him, but fake news Nate with that bubble completely disrupting the backline and catching three. I think that made it rather easy 
to single out Lunara early on in the fight and allow for the virtual Murky Slayers to stay in this one when really it looked like they had their backs against the wall and that was that. It'll be interesting if they can keep up fights of that magnitude and able to swing it all the way back from about 20 points down. Yeah, do you think it's they just have to keep doing that in every fight or what? Because they have one tower basically that they can give up right now. They do not have much leeway here. Ooh, I don't know. That's a tough one. I feel like they pigeonholed themselves into a comp that has to get a pick off. Or they're going to lack in damage compared to Tickle Me Tassadar. So as long as they can continue to get those big bubbles in the early picks in the fight, they definitely have a chance. But if they ever fail to pull that out, the sustain from Decker Kane is just going to be more in the long run than a Medivh and Abathur can offer a team. And in the end, since they were having such long fights here on Towers of Doom, I think that's all that Tickle Me Tassadar needs to do. Stay alive early and win it later on. So how do you deal with these kind of fights when there's multiple uh, alters? You have to get one. The enemy team has Dahaka. You can't. You have to commit to one though. How do you deal with this? Well, thankfully with Medivh, they have great poke here, and they're using the portal right now to achieve just that. So they'll have time to play the defensive side, but it does force their hand. So if they don't okay, get that early. Okay, going pick. out. Decker King going down Whoa. immediately. Will the ring land? Ring Whoa. lands with two people. No follow up though. As Jada was polymorph there. Whoa. Zera tool at 1 HP, they just need to tickle him one time and he's gonna go down to the fake Zera. Real Zera is still fine though. Intershock will coming out from Johanna. Will they be able to live? It looks like they might. Pulling the Arthas into tower range. She did have a shield on him though and no tower shots did end up going out. They lived to fight another day and it's six to four. They've done it again. They've done it again. They get an early pick on one and they're able to translate that into a team fight win. Plus boss. Ooh, man, this is gonna make this game insanely intense. Uh, Earlier you on, like MDP. This is a risky boss here? Ah, uh, nah, no risk here. I'm sure they'll get it in time. But earlier on, MDP predicted Tickle Me Tassadar to be able to pull it off with that huge lead they have. But now that we're down to four versus two next alter win scenario, do you still pick Tickle Me Tassadar here, MDP? Hmm. It's, this one's a hard one because the way that uh, both teams have been playing have been very good but virtual murky slayers have been doing their comp right in these last few fights and if they do that one more time it's all over it's uh it's gonna be interesting to see if tickle me tassadar can uh, catch on to that strategy and find a workaround before the uh, game's over yeah what do you think they need to do to win these fights now I'm gonna have to say that the uh, I don't know. It's tough. Really, I think it comes down to old pro on the Johanna to just peel that back line like it ain't nobody's business. Because if if they get those picks off on on one of their big backline carries or their support, it's it's been proven pretty clear here that oh. virtual murky slayers will absolutely win from that point out so perhaps the back oh. line of tickle me tassadar is stepping too far forward there are a lot of factors at play here it's, yep. it's pretty so cool abathur say. doing really great here he's going to be able to get this tower so now even if tickle me tassadar wins this fight they actually don't win the game because they only have three shots uh will virtual mercy be able to get it Lunar does poke off. big fight in the back bubble hit no one though tat or zertal going down almost immediately Arthas going in, but he is not in a great position for all the carries. They don't actually turn on him for quite a while, though. Contagion going out. They are able to get a good amount of damage here. Dahaka going to be able to heal up. Uh, will Arthas be able to get out? That portal isn't too far. I think they'd be able to catch him oh, anywhere. Then Malfail also killing Lunara and vice versa. A good 1v1 there with both players going down. It looks like they can't uh, catch her. Making the good play, yeah, they can't cap or they won't loot or they won't win the game. So if they can take this before capping, uh, they'll be able to take it. But Medivh going to put up a solid defense here. <laughs> a nice polymorph spreading it out quite a lot. It looks like it is going to go down. Will he be able to defend this alone? Him and Hat, that's all they've got here. We'll see if they're able to do it. He's doing a lot of poke, buying a lot of time for his team. Zero tool is up in 10. That's a lot of time, though. Will he be able to make it? Do we, 
A lot of poke. He's able to protect himself. He it might go down though. He oh. does, and that is game most likely. Unless Abathur has something to say about it, but Abathur I don't think he does. Really do it? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, my goodness. What an excellent way to end that game. No kidding, and that's going to be a draw series here from the virtual Murky Slayers and Tickle Me Tastar. Thank you, everybody, for joining in on this off-brand serial cast of Division C West. We'll see you next time.